Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with our fourth Ruby programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a couple I.O. methods and a couple convenience things that you can do with strings that will help you out with these I.O. methods. Uh, right now, this might not be too useful, but it'll be very useful when we're getting into writing actual Ruby programs, not just programming in the, in, in the um, interactive shell. So let's go right ahead and fire up IRB and let's assign a variable a and make it 10. Okay, now let's say we want to make a string and we want that to say your number is 10. Pretty trivial, right? You just have quotes, your number is 10. But let's say I want to actually make the string have the value of a right inside the string and whatever the value of a is that will be whatever's in the string. You can actually do this pretty easily using a special syntax that Ruby has. So right here, you want to put a dollar sign, left curly brace, then the variable, then a right curly brace. Or sorry, not a dollar sign, a number sign. So it's a, a pound sign, curly brace, some expression, curly brace. And in case you're unfamiliar, you can type curly brace simply by holding shift and hitting the left bracket key and the right bracket key. Anyway, this is our string, and if we just hit enter, your number is 10. Almost like magic. Now, we can actually put any piece of Ruby code that we want inside of here. And it doesn't just have to be a variable. For instance, we could do a plus 2 right there, and it'll say your number is 12. You could also do like a dot abs, you know, you, you could do pretty much anything. It, do, it doesn't matter. So that is a way to basically embed the result of some kind of Ruby expression right in a string. And this will be very useful for printing out output when you're actually writing a Ruby program. Um, so now let's explore a method called put s. Um, some people call it puts. I like to differentiate. Put s most likely stands for put string. So I call it put s just because of that. So let's go ahead and type put s space and then a quote and hi and then another quote you will see that here is the return value. It returned nil. And there's an equal sign and a greater sign right before the nil. Don't worry about what nil is right now. It basically just means there's no return value. But what the interesting thing is, is that above the return value, it says hi. And this essentially means that the putS method actually showed hi before it returned. And essentially, what the putS method does is, you will give it a string and it will print that string out to the, to the terminal. So when you're actually writing a Ruby program, the, the, you know, it's not going to print out the return value of every line. So the only way that you're going to show any information to the user of your Ruby script will be to use putS. Because only the Ruby interpreter is, is what does this little thing here. Um, Ruby programs by default will not do that. So you can use what we just learned in a put s. So you can say the number is a. And it'll print it out right there. The number is 10. Um, so that is basically what put s does. You can obviously do anything that would ha be a string here. So a, b, c, d, plus e, f, g, h, i, j, k, whatever. And it prints it out like you'd expect. So that is the put s method, um, and that is pretty pretty much useless when it comes to the interactive console, but it's very vital when you're actually writing a Ruby program, which we will be doing shortly. Um, another method that is similar to the put s method is the get s method, and this takes no parameters. So unlike put s, which takes one parameter, and that's a string that we just put like a space after put s, and then we put that. The getS method has no parameters. So all we have to do is type getS, hit enter, and now what just happened? We typed getS, we hit enter, and it didn't return. The function has there the method has not returned because we don't see a return value, we don't see our new prompt. And the secret is getS essentially just tells you what the user types. So if I type hey and hit enter. Ruby will say that 
or the return value of get s will be hey backslash n. Don't worry about backslash n just yet, I'll get to that in a second. But essentially, the get s method will prompt, will just make the user type a line, and then it will return what the user just typed. And the trick here is that the enter key is actually a character, so just like H, E, and Y are characters, the return key is actually a character, and that is called backslash n. And it's a special character of its own. But the way to get rid of that is to use a method called chomp, and we will get to that in a second. So first of all, let's look at assigning variable. We can say b equals gets. Then we type a string like hello. And you can see that the return value is hello. And now if we type b, it'll be hello backslash n, like normal. Now, there's a method on strings called chomp. And this method will just get rid of the backslash n from the end of the string. It's very convenient. So we can do b dot chomp, and then the return value of that will just be hello. Now, there's also a b dot chomp exclamation point, which will actually, so right now, if we just look, b will still have the backslash n. b dot hello exclamation point, or sorry, not hello exclamation, dot chomp exclamation point, and now b will no longer have the backslash n at all. So the chomp method just gets rid of the backslash n that is usually there because of get s or a similar method that re reads a line and it reads the return key. So when you're writing a Ruby program, you know, it's going to be very helpful. You might you might print something using put s and say enter your name. And then you might get their name using get s. You will probably chomp that and then you would you could even say like hello and then their name using the uh, notation so maybe let me just outline how you might do that you could say put s enter your name it tells me to enter my name then I say name equals get s dot chomp and you know dot chomp you're just calling dot chomp on the return value of get s so that actually will work and it'll just chomp the output of get s so we can go ahead and type Alex and now we can say put s hello or name and it'll say hello Alex now if this was actually a Ruby program there would be no return values here making it all cluttered and messy it would literally just say enter your name you enter your name and then it would say hello and then your name um, so this is just a little preview of what we're gonna be getting to when we're actually writing real Ruby programs so uh, Stay tuned for next time. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and favorite, like this video, do anything you feel like. Any questions, please feel free to comment. So thanks for watching, subscribe, and goodbye.